What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Hold Husband Podcast. I'm your host, Terry Duran. I got both of my co-hosts on the line with me tonight. I got my man, Jay Bobo, in here. What's going on, man? Not much, man. Ready to get into another great episode, man. Looking forward to this one. Hopefully, everybody enjoyed their weekend, man. And shout out to the folks in Seychelles. You know, we've been ranked on out there, so salute to them. But want to quickly remind you, you can catch us on TikTok as well as subscribe to us on YouTube at Holders and Podcast. And for those interested in promos or shout outs, you can choose the DM on IG at Holders and Podcast as well as email us at Holders Podcast at gmail.com. All right, see? Uh, I also got my man SD in the building. What's good, man? Mud man, working these long hours, but I'm here, y'all. I'm here for the people. That's what it is. But let me give a shout out first to Brother Soul Productions for always keeping the background audio fresh. And I want to remind you all to donate to the Hold a Husband podcast on Cash App and PayPal. All right, T. Uh, I want to remind everybody, y'all can catch the audio playback of the podcast every Monday afternoon at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time on the core94.com. Uh, tonight's episode is titled Long Term Goals. Uh, and we're going to be talking about why it's important to think long term when making dating decisions uh, and evaluating potential partners. Um, but uh, y'all know how we do around here, man. We like to discuss stuff that we've seen trending or on our timeline. Uh, so we got a couple interesting videos to discuss uh, this week. Um, this first video is a video of Ayana, uh, I think it's Van Zandt, uh, where she's yeah. talking about uh, where she's showing her frustration with um the culture uh and how women really only seem to care about what men can do for them let's take a look the greatest crimes perpetuated against black men specifically is the level to which their humanity and their hearts have been devalued diminished and dehumanized and that they have become doing machines the greatest value a black man has if, in many instances is what he can do for somebody right. and how he can do it and how much he can do it and how much he earns doing it. I mean, I, I hear it and see it among young people in the relationships, you know, oh, you're going to get my nails done and you're going <laughs> to do this and you're going to do that. Right. You know, they've been demeaned and devalued and, and, and dehearted right. to the point where they value themselves based on what they can do mm. fix it get it make it happen um uh, i mean this is not news to us um it's unfortunate you know we talk about this it comes up in, in several different conversations or several different yeah. topics uh where the monetization of sex and romance uh how women feel entitled to a guy earning a certain amount or w won't view a man as date worthy unless he earns a certain amount um even when the women themselves are below average uh as far as attracting his goals um or you knew i was going actually, there <laughs> or I, 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 yeah. it was all in that old time for you was gonna go there uh, <laughs> so so yeah i mean i i don't I mean, I can't speak for a white man. I don't know how, you know, I don't know if it's, it's the racial component of it, mm -hmm. uh, but as a man in general, uh, I think just society, society as a whole judges you based off what you bring to the table and what you can provide for yourself and your family. Yeah, I mean, I expect a woman to, to want a man that can do. Otherwise, what you got him for? If a man can't do anything, he's worthless within mm. the relationship that because because as a man you are supposed to be able to provide you are supposed to be able to protect you are supposed to be able to lead guide structure discipline kids all of you supposed to be able to do that's that's really your job as a, a man within a relationship with a woman every woman looks for that no matter what race of woman that they are white women look for men that are successful or on the path to success that's no different. The difference comes in when the women out here, what she is talking about is requiring that you pay for the nails. I think she mentioned nails or get their yeah. hair done or take me yeah. to a five star restaurant. Like it's a complete pay for my difference. Yeah, okay. yeah, like, like it's, it's a complete difference from a woman that's trying to come up off of you for her own benefit right. as opposed to a woman wanting a man that's stable 
that's secure, that can provide in order so that um, they they both can live a lifestyle and she can take care of him also. Those are two completely different things that every woman wants. So as a man, that is essentially the job that you have as a man. Like that woman has a job as a nurturer, a caregiver, a homemaker, and those things within the home. That's just the way that it is. And if she can't do it, most men nowadays, most men um, are, are not attracted to her not being able to do those things. So I don't have a problem with it. Well, Go ahead. I agree with Chesty. But here's, here's the thing, right? What you said, you know, what a man's supposed to do and what a woman's supposed to do, right? Those are even exchanges, right? But it, the, see, the way yeah. she just described it is basically these women just want something for nothing. They want a man Come to do on. all that stuff and not give him anything but maybe just sex. And I think in this generation, we live in one of the most selfish and entitled generations ever. And I think social media has a lot to do with it because think about it. She can be a four or a hard five, right? And have dudes in a DM, some of them offering to fly her out, take her to the, do X, Y, and Z. So it's kind of warped a lot of these women's perspective and, you know, overvalue themselves or place more value in themselves than they actually really have. Yeah, I mean, well, guys have always, I mean, the guys in their pursuit of sex, um, they, they've shown for centuries um, that they're willing to, to exchange money for it or, or, or take the least yeah. path of resistance, <laughs> right? Uh, and so if yeah. women are able to use technology to get cash app money, you know, so to get money and, get, and send videos and, you know, they sell dirty panties and all these type of things where they monetize yep. their sexuality uh, and, and uh, take advantage they, of the thirst that their beauty generates. Um, so and even, it's... it's yeah, I was gonna say it's it's it, the problem is though, um, like we said, there there are so many women with this level of entitlement where they feel like just to get my time or attention or to be able just to be able to take me on a date, you got to do X, Y, and Z, and it's like like that's where the warped perception of reality comes in because it's like how you have yeah. that level of attitude when. In a lot of cases, the, the man is doing things for you you can't even afford to do for yourself. Yeah, and and you know, like exactly. what the, the entitlement, like I have no problem providing for a woman that's providing for me in some type of way. Like, and, and that's serious, and it's like, you know what I'm saying, down for me. I ain't got no issue with that. But when a when a three or a four comes out here <laughs> and be like, yo, you gotta you got to make $100,000. And, th- and this here is something that we had talked about before. Like nowadays, a man got to make $100,000 just to date a four. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> of a low average woman. Like, like, just think about it. A man got to be above average by the metrics that women grade men by, which is their finances. It plays a big part. That's not everything, yeah. but it plays a big part. So he yeah. got to be above Absolutely. average to date a below average woman with her looks and her body, which is the metrics that most men initially judge women off of, right? This is an amazing time that we're in because social media, simps, and panderers got below average women believing that they are entitled to an upper tier man, even though it's not that many upper tier men. But you know why? You know why? Because those men will have Buzz sex with, with women that are below average or, or not women that they would date. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. I understand. But 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 by now, by the time you reach 25, 30, like you you done smashed 20 dudes that made a hundred thousand dollars. But don't none of them don't none of them want to keep you around long term because you're 80 pounds overweight. Don't none of them want to keep you long term because your attitude is horrible. Don't none of them want to keep you long long term because you're facially challenged. Like you can, (laughs) sex is different. Sex is different. That your your sexual options are vast as a woman. Your sexual options are vast, but your relationship options are few. So you have to understand what your relationship uh, uh, um, options are because your relationships options is really the reality of what you want unless you just want to be out here you know what i'm saying getting bent over the sinks and stuff yeah. like that you know it's different <laughs> but they're they, they they not even looking at it like that 
they not they not looking at it like damn why don't these men want to date me long term they're looking at it oh well he he want to smash me he calling me to take me to pound town at two in the morning but doesn't want to do anything past that so that's why the inspectors are going to be walked on a period even even though you just hit on some great points there yeah i mean like i said it, it to, to get back to the initial point like I, you guys have to to be able to avoid or just cut cut off women that have these kind of entitled attitudes that she was describing mm -hmm. where you know we mm -hmm. see where they go on a first date and they got a list of requirements you got to do a b c like if you're not man enough to be able to to curve a woman even though she may be really attractive or you may be you know so you may really like her you have to have certain boundaries and places that you're just not willing to go uh, and that's mm -hmm. the problem with with the simps and all that. They'll just cave in. Ain't got no one. Yep. Yeah, and, no and, and will cater to all their demands, and they'll yep. they'll bend over backwards or put themselves in a messed up position, trying to to c convince a woman to give them a chance or get a woman to like them. Uh, and that's why they end up looking stupid in the long run. Yeah, man. I remember I met. I had uh, started talking to this chick. It was on um, social media one time. It was years ago. Mm -hmm. And Shorty was like, "Hey, can you send me some money?" I was like, "I ain't sending you nothing. <laughs> I don't even know you." That was my last time talking to her. <laughs> she didn't even call me back. Yeah. Nothing after that. But a simp, a simple sending. He so you know, yeah. and and the women will get these here dudes. They so infatuated with the woman or happy that a woman is actually talking to them. That they'll spend that money on them. They'll send them money just to talk to them. They'll send them and money just, just to get their DMs read. Like, sure, you the know, code word. The code word is they like they like generous men. Um, generous. These men, <laughs> yeah. these men are doing this out of their just own generosity. They're just, yeah, they just, right. you know, they're like they yeah, they okay. try to play these kind of word games and these mind games, yeah. like like mm -hmm. the fact that this dude want to smash ain't the reason that he's doing all these. But, hey man, them just so secret right. hoes. They secret hoes. That's all. <laughs> because because she right. know she know what he want behind that. Like he ain't just generous to be generous. He wants you generous with them titties. That's what he wants yep. you generous with. Your vaginal canal. That's what he wants you generous with. Right. And you know it. And and a lot of women do it, depending on how much money it is. They'll do it quick. So they they, they just secret hoes, man. Secret prostitutes. A lot of these women. So, you know, if you're dumb enough to fall for it as a man, you ain't gonna get oh, no yeah. sympathy from me. Nope. All right, man, let's keep these rolling. Now, this, this next video um, kind of shows the, the negative side of divorce for me. Um, this is a video of comedian Gary Owens talking about how his relationship with his children changed once he got divorced from his wife. Let's take a look. I, I read a quote where they said, when you go through a divorce, when your kids are younger, they idolize their dad. Then when the divorce happens, they demonize them. I, I know, and, and I think deep down my kids know, they know I was, I was there when they was growing up. They know no matter what was going on in my life, they came first. And it's weird how I was, everything was fine until the divorce happened. And then I became a deadbeat. Then it was I abandoned everybody. And I was like, this, that is not what happened. I never put my career before them. It was, it was equal. You know what I mean? I never, my manager, my management, when we went over my schedule, when's their, when's their kids' birthdays? What events do they got to be in? Like if there was a, a recital, a basketball game, things like that, I was like, okay, I got to get back. I got to make it. Like we would literally, okay, what, what day is, is Austin's birthday? What day is Kennedy's birthday? Emilio's birthday? Like, okay, so you can't work that day. Or I got to be close enough that I can get back for their birthday. Hey, we had a reality show. You know what I mean? That everybody got paid on. I was making my kids money when they were under 18. You know what I mean? Man, I've heard stories like this a lot. You know, um, obviously, um, the children's ages when the divorce happened uh, has a lot to do with it. Uh, but when they're younger children where the mother can influence them and manipulate their perception of the dad, um, it, in most cases, the dad ends up taking the L. Uh, even for celebrity dads that provide a, a luxury lifestyle for their kids, uh, can, they can provide all these kind of opportunities um, that will be underappreciated. Um, and a lot of that has to do with how 
women can always play the victim and paint the man uh, in a negative light no matter what he does. Mm-hmm. And and guess what? When she do that, the women are going to believe her. They don't need to hear nobody's side. They don't need to hear the other side of the story. They going to believe that woman 100%. And they going to say, oh, you're so strong. You're such a queen. That dog. I can't believe that dog. Don't even know the other side of the story of that. And they going to run with it. And, and a lot of times, like you mentioned, um, they put this into the kids. Your dad broke us up. Your dad cheated on me and left us like this. And then the kids become bitter and hardened towards their dad. He also told the story in that interview that he went to his daughter's college graduation and he couldn't hug her. Nothing. He didn't even let her know he was there because it was going to piss her off. So he took pictures from afar, I think, or had a photographer taking pictures from afar where she didn't know who he was. And then he said he texted her and let her know, hey, you look so beautiful today. She said, I'm blocking you since you won't respect my boundaries. I don't want to hear from you. This is daughter. This is his daughter. Now, I don't know what led up to the divorce. It's it's alleged that he cheated. It's alleged. I mean, right? that's the, I, I would say that I would suspect that. Yes, and 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 that that in itself can also do it without influence. So I want to give it a little a tip. That can do it without influence from the you, mom. What you mean? The kid, the kids finding out that the they the dad cheated on them. Yeah, mom. and and think about it like this. Remember love and basketball. When when Q found out his dad cheated on his mom, their relationship went downhill because of that. It, it because you know you like man, how could you do this to my mom, right? So you also got to think about it from that point of view and not just say, hey, well the mom is manipulating these kids to think that way. It could just be the kids were teenagers at the time because this ain't been that long. This might have been six, right. seven years, right? They could have been yeah. sixteen because she graduating college now, right? So she could have been 16 yeah. or 17 and, and the boy is 17 or whatever and, and able to formulate opinions and it just ruined him that he would cheat and break up the family. Now he out of the house. Dad ain't in the home no more. Mom is crying. She got issues. Now the, the kids are struggling with certain things. Like it could be that is all I'm saying. Also. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's definitely a possibility. I mean, the, these situations are just sad and unfortunate because obviously it sounds like he was trying to be the best father that he could be to those kids yeah. regardless of the mm-hmm. relationship that he had w- with his yeah. with his now ex-wife and it's just it's just sad it's just really sad to see this because even this situation i think it puts the kids to unnecessary trauma when, when things like this happen you know now we don't know the situation the ins and outs but even then i think you know the mother could have said hey listen that no matter what he did to me, that's still your father. You still love. But, you know, I think a lot of times in these issues, in these things, women just think of themselves and think what serves them. So there's a lot of these situations where women turn the kids against against the father. I've seen that. Too. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, yeah, you see you see those kind of situations. And unfortunately, you know, the, the more successful you are and the better lifestyle you provide for your kids, um, the more that they kind of have this this level of entitlement as well yeah um you know like the the same kids that benefit from who they dads are <laughs> and their family name you know what i'm saying and all the exposure like we see it with ti's kids and all these other little things romeo there. whereas like <laughs> we know you because your dad put you your parents put you in that position a lot of them don't appreciate it because um i don't know why why it's this way but it seems like um for me and a lot of times if you do anything that a woman or a child dislikes it it, it erases all of the the good <laughs> or the, everything that you've done preceding that um so so it's a real unfair um way that men are perceived in a lot of instances jerry did you just compare women to children Listen, hey man, hey, you, 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 you're not being a good co host with uh, put me on the spot with that, man. That's what we have for. This is your man, this is your boy. <laughs> boy. <laughs> That's what we're here for, man. You know what I'm saying? We're here to hear the yeah. perspective on why you yeah. think women are children. <laughs> <laughs> 
But hey, but listen, hey. but listen, like it's you you are right. Like with, with a lot of things that you're saying, man. So the kids feel the kids feel a lot of entitlement, man, because the parents make them that way a lot of times. Especially when they got money and certain things, man. These parents giving them everything. They ain't making but, them work for nothing. Uh, and so they feel entitled. Hour, exactly. Yeah, they 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 uh they don't they don't feel like they have to earn anything. They feel like they should be given everything. So that sense of entitlement is there. And then if you you remove that because now you grown you're bad guy. because now we not together we not together and you grown so you should be doing more things on your own man these kids become resentful behind that type of stuff you know what i mean what was you gonna say jay or was it terry no i was just gonna tell you i can't say more or less say the same same thing is to say these kids never really had to work and like a lot of times these parents, you know, they had to grind and scratch their way to get to where they are. You know, a lot of them, they're at the top of their fields, right? The kids didn't have to. They got their name because of who their father was, you know? Like you said, T.I.'s kids, um, 50 yeah. Cent's son, Lil Romeo. You, you know what's yeah. crazy? Listen, you know what's crazy? When Kevin Samuels was alive, and Kevin Samuels would have all these here women on his on his show, and um, he would ask them, hey, was your mom and dad together? And most of the ladies, a lot of the ladies would say, yeah, they still together. But then when it came to how their mom and dad were and how hard mm -hmm. they dad worked, they would downplay or look down on the lifestyle that they mom and dad had because they had this now, not only within the home, you create a sense of entitlement, social media is, 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 yeah. is uh, creating a sense of entitlement in people that don't what they deserve. deserve what they what they what they are they feel entitled to. That's why you get that's why you get the men talking about the facially challenged woman and want the man that makes over a hundred thousand dollars. It's the entitlement that's being pushed by social media, and and then you add rich kids or I don't know how much money he has, but you add that dynamic into it as well. You gonna have a powder keg of different things when 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 the relationship goes bad. So I hope at some point they can restore this relationship, but it don't look like it's gonna be no time soon. Yeah, it's unfortunate, man. But like you said, I, hopefully they can work it out when when feelings, you know, and maturity kick in. Uh, let's keep things rolling, man. We about to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, we're gonna begin this tonight's topic: long term goals. Uh, we're going to be talking about why it's important to think long term when making dating decisions um, and when it comes to evaluating a potential mate. Uh, you guys are tuning into the Hold the Husband podcast. We'll be back in a moment. Hi, I'm relationship coach and Arthur Terry Duran, and I am pleased to announce that my book, It's Not That Complicated, is finally available as an audio book. So if you don't like to read or you just don't have time to read a paperback book, this audio book is perfect for you. You can listen to it while you're in your car, while you're at work, etc. In the book, I break down how husband material men think and operate in regards to sex, love, and relationships. And I provide real quality insight on how husband material men approach dating. The audiobook is available on audible.com and on iTunes. All you have to do is go to one of the websites and search for my name, Terry Duran. Go download your copy today. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Hold a Husband podcast. Tonight's episode is titled Long Term Goals. Um, we're talking about why it's important to think long term when you're making your dating decisions uh, and when you are eva evaluating a potential mate. Um, for men, if you, if you think about the long term goals that most women have, um, if, you, if you have that in the back of your mind and you work towards making sure you meet the, the the requirements you're always going to be able to have dating success um that's why we talk about men that you know got their life in order that can provide stability at, at least can provide a a level of stability it ain't, it ain't gotta be luxury you ain't gotta have designer to head to toe but you have to be able to show that you have your life and your priorities in order in order to appeal to any woman for long-term success um so from a male perspective, it's, it's a given. You have to have that kind of mind mindset. Yeah, I mean, it, women find a man with a plan attractive. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? So you you gotta you gotta be on your way or 
in your plan you currently there whatever it is because it increases your chances with the types of women that you like but one of the major things that i find with uh me you know wanting to be serious with somebody or settle down whatever you want to say it is is knowing myself is one of the most important things knowing the type of woman that fits best for me personally right for me personally um to have that long-term success i don't a, a boss chick just don't do it for me a boss chick that's career uh driven career oriented chasing the bag chasing her own goals and different things like that that don't work for me so i don't even entertain those types of women because um it's going to clash with the way that that i want to structure and, and lead our lives together so you got to know who you are out here and what works best for you that's really important and have a plan together to get there and it'll increase your chances of getting the woman you want uh, absolutely i think the like like you just said but i think the first step of anything is having that level of self-awareness and knowing what you like and what you don't like right i mean and having a plan goes a long way things may not always go the way you plan it but if you have that plan and you have that vision women actually like that a man with a plan and a man that has some vision because it, it shows a level of leadership when when you have this is what i'm gonna do and this is what i'm gonna do to get this is my five-year plan 10-year plan and you know so on and so forth yeah i mean as, as a man since we have to finance ourselves it's, it's really hard for me to relate to guys that don't have their lives together. You know what I'm saying? Like, a, as many opportunities as there are out there, as many things as, as you can do to put yourself in position, I, I could never understand guys that just stood around and did nothing or, you know what I'm mm. saying, procrastinate and don't put no effort into building something or doing something with their lives. Um, but the way I always looked at it, I never really cared uh, why they did it. I, I just understood very early on that if I did do those things, it would put me in a different caliber as far as on the dating market. Um, and so yeah. that, those are the, that was a, a lot of my motivation as far as going to the military, and going to college and all those type of things. I knew the lifestyle that I wanted for myself and my family, and I knew nobody else was going to hand it to me. So I, was, I started very early on investing in myself to put myself in a position to do it because ultimately that's how men are judged by society based on the lifestyle that they can provide for themselves and their their families if they have them. Yeah, if you, if you can't provide for a family, you ain't got no business trying to get one. Absolutely in, in, in my it, book, it you ain't got no business. Accidents happen. I know accidents <laughs> happen. I'm talking about... <laughs> Trust me, man. I know because that you know I, I pull out game week two. I pull out game week two, man. So I know accidents happen. Create your family real quick. <laughs> but you know you you should be you should be on your way somewhere. And women should entertain men that ain't got it together. If you pass thirty, if you pass thirty and he ain't got no plan, he ain't got nothing going for himself. Where you expect him to lead you to? He really can't lead you nowhere but to the nowhere. gutter, right where he at. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, if you want long long term success for yourself yeah, as a woman, then you shouldn't be, you know, looking for too much potential in a guy that ain't seeing it in himself. Go ahead, Jay. Uh, now, as I was gonna say, I just want to pick that up, uh, you know, something resonant. You know, I'm a firm believer of you are the company you keep. And if you know, if you want to be someone that's successful in anything, you got to put yourself around people who are like, like you just said, if you put yourself around somebody who's a bum, you know, it's only a matter of time before you pick up those habits and become a bum like that man is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, you don't want to be, you don't want to be the guy that can't provide for his, his family in some way, shape or form. Right, like, you, yeah. like you got to be doing something. That, because that don't mean a woman ain't hundred percent of the bills. No, that ain't what that means. Yeah. Because you could, because you provide, you provide as a man. You could be, you could be a fifty fifty guy and be really great. Right, I personally don't mm -hmm. believe in fifty fifty, but you could be a fifty fifty guy and be really great. You could be exceptional in your your parenting skills as a dad. You could be a great uh, guider, a leader, a disciplinarian. You could be a great logical thinker to so that you all can save money. You could be a handyman, good with your hands, so you all can sell. So it's all type of uh, different things that you can provide to a family outside of um, outside of finances. 
So I don't want to make it seem like, you know, it's only finances because it's not, but it is a major, um, it is a major key to a relationship. And if you cannot um, financially provide to a nice clip, let's say 50% at least, most women are not mm-hmm. going to respect you if you can't at least do that. Yeah, if you can't Most at least women are not going to respect you at all in yeah, the that, home. No. No. Cause it's because gonna be it's going to be slick comments. It's going to be passive aggressive stuff. Yo, the meme like, man. Yeah. yeah. Come on, that, man. That, that, hey, it's, you, re- you remember um, why, did I, why Did I Get Married, right? When, with yeah, uh, yeah. the big guy, Michael John White, and his wife was making all the money. And then she would make these little comments like, oh, well, we know your job ain't bringing in the money. And he's sitting there steaming like, what you mean? You know what I'm saying? You're going to you're gonna get that from a lot of women out here, especially she making more money than you. And then when you talk about the stats on women making more money than men, they have a, a 50% higher chance of divorce if she make more money than you. So you got to get your, you got to get your stuff together out here to be able to, to, you know, have that leadership role in that arena as well when it comes to your family. That's just my opinion. On well, it. well, the reason that, I, uh, you know, the discussion about long-term thinking is so important, especially for women is because what I've observed over the years is a lot of women try to rush the process to get in a committed relationship. So they oh, try yeah. to find shortcuts. They try to find gimmicks. They try to go on dates with it with a list of magic questions and, and all these type of things to try to verbally get a guy to commit to a, a you know what I'm saying? Like they do all these type of things that end up setting themselves up to get played or, you know, play right into the hands of fuck boys. Uh, and so if they if they started thinking long term and just pump their brakes on focus on, on on the commitment and making sure that they're actually compatible with the guy, I think that they they'd they have a lot more success. Yeah, you do get a lot of that. Yeah. I've noticed it personally. You know, that's why that's why um like you said, um, you know, women get taken advantage I don't even know if I would say advantage of, but they get themselves they get in predicaments. They hear, so. Yeah, that they yeah. regret later on because they are not being patient. A, a woman will eliminate a man for wanting to go get coffee or wanting to go get a smoothie. And then she she pedestalized a dude that took her to Mastro's. Not knowing that dude at Mastro's, he just, he got the money. He don't care about right. taking a woman on a date, going to eat, and then she, she feeling like, oh man, this here is great. He's the one he can smash and then he dip out. You know what I'm saying? Women, women are a horrible judge of character when it comes to men. They are horrible. Like, and, and it's like, it's almost like, and I think it's because women don't learn much during the dating, during the dating phase. They don't learn much in their lives growing up from their they late teenage years, 18 on up. A lot of them, because there's always men there to replace the one they just left. So there's no, yep. there's really no self-reflection that's done there. But it's always, because if you talk to them, it's always the man's fault as to why the relationship right. Ended but, right. So if you always think absolutely. that it's the man's fault, then you have nothing to improve on in order to improve your dating your dating life. And I think a lot of women fall into that because a lot of men that they date aren't going to tell them certain things because they just trying yeah. to hit. And by the time they realize it, you know, it's too late, and it's another dude right behind them ready to take his place. That's the other one. Touch on that real quick. That's what I say. I think I think sometimes it's a societal thing too where what you, you know, mean society doesn't really where well i mean like society doesn't really hold women accountable for for what they do you know certain a lot of things that that a man does and a woman does you know society goes at women with you know with kid gloves about it right and just in the oh, everyday yeah. like you know people don't people just don't hold women. like you said even men aren't going to hold women account why because they want to sleep with them and they ain't trying to mess up the chance to sleep with her so he's, he's not gonna hold no. her account he's just gonna let it slide no. I, I wanted to touch on something that you had said, uh, as the, you talked about the, the patience from a women's perspective. Um, yeah. I think I think the pro one of the, the big problems is when we when you talk about patience or timing and all those things uh, to women in regards to dating. Fundamentally, it goes down to how long he wait for sex, how long before the sex. 
because mm -hmm. that's that seems to be this this magic thing that women place all the mm -hmm. significance in. And so being patient, I, I I can see a lot of women interpreting that to mean make him wait X amount of time before we have sex. And that's how they they you know their time is focused in regards to relationship. When really what the patience that you're meaning is take the time to make sure that you're actually compatible with the guy long term yeah. before yeah, you yeah. either commit or you, you start behaving in a way that put yourself in a position to be pregnant or connect to him long term. Yes, because taking that time to actually get to know him, vet him and use your discernment, you can see certain things before you dive into, you know what I'm saying, the physical part of it. Because a lot of times, once they dive into the physical part of it, if he hit them good, it's a wrap. <laughs> yep. It's, it's a wrap. Yeah, she ready to give him her, her debit card and the pin to the, to the ATM yeah. card and everything. That ain't the only <laughs> way. Right. That ain't the only way. He, he can snatch I'm her so and, 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 and have her twisted too. Man, I got a book of social security numbers right here that I had got from chicks, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, just get me the social security uh, number. So I can go get this. So I can go get this Escalade real quick. No, but I'm just saying, like, the, the the women, you know, by the time they realize it, man, dude is he in there? He gone, and she can't walk away. She can't walk away. That's why you have to be patient. You got to be patient with your mind, and you got to be patient with your body. Not to the point of playing games like, hey, you got to wait three months. You got to wait 90 days. Not to that point, but to the point where where you actually know, like Terry said, y'all y'all are aligned with what you want. Um, you have you have set back and observed his character, his integrity, his morals, his fathering skills, if he a dad, how he handles his business to know that, hey, if something does happen, I know that he going to be solid about it. If I if I happen to get pregnant or something like that, I know he gonna be solid about it. I know he ain't gonna mess me over. Like you have to take your time out here because, like you also said earlier, um, Terry, when you talked about shortcuts, ain't no shortcuts to this thing called love. These here shortcuts, that's what these people doing on TV. Ninety Day Fiance, uh, blind <laughs> something where they get yeah. married, they don't even see each other. Those are shortcuts, and typically. In most cases, those things do not last long term. They might get married for the sake of the show, but when you talk about two, three, four years, it typically don't last. So because last. shortcuts don't work like that. That's not how love and in the long term relationship works. You got to actually do the work. So, but part of the problem is just kind of how how dating happens, right? Mm -hmm. because most dating or romantic slash sexual situations occur based off of physical attraction and opportunity. Y'all was at the same party. Y'all was at the same, y'all was on the elevator together. And so a lot of the, the choices that are made are based off of superficial things. How tall he was, how good she smelled, okay. how her toes look, you know what I'm saying? Like something All that- All them toes. Hey, now you talk <laughs> yeah, my language. <laughs> it, could, it could be something that is very insignificant um, long term, but could be could, but could cause a major reaction in the short term. Um, and, and a lot of times these situations end up in unexpected pregnancies, situationships or, or, or these kind of situations where two people that ain't got no business together. Now they've been sleeping raw for four months already. You know what I'm saying? Like. It, you you just you see all these type of situations that people put themselves in when they ain't got no job, they ain't got you know insurance. Like they 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 don't yep. have the things that are required to to protect yourself from living a, a reckless lifestyle like that. Like that. Man, I don't think a lot of people think that deep about it. And and really, people, man, you know, not at all. It's really you know it's really on the women a lot of times, man, really, because they the ones be stuck when if this fool decide to leave but you know that's why that's why women really really should be patient and take their time with men out here and get to know these here dudes because if something do happen you the one stuck with the baby is he a loser in the deadbeat 
Absolutely he is. But he gone off somewhere doing his thing. Yeah, we can call him all types of names. But the fact of the matter is, is that your life, yep, no, your don't. life is the one that's that's drastically changed. Not even just not even just your everyday life. Your health. Your health also with mm. having a baby, being at risk and, and different things like that. So you got to take that into consideration. Go ahead, Jay. But you but you know what? Here's the thing, right? A lot of that stuff. You can like like Terry was saying, if you bet if you bet the guy and take your time, you can see a lot of that stuff in the beginning because mm-hmm. a lot of these character shapes that, that we're talking about, right? The man didn't just wake up and become this way. He was like this in the beginning. This is who he really was. It's hey, just hey. like the signs yeah. of the red flags were there and you just yeah. you just missed it because you like this guy, you know, you sleep with him and you're not thinking about all that stuff. Yeah, you know what that so, remind me of? That remind me well, real quick, Terry. That, that remind you me when you go on a job interview. I don't know if you, mm-hmm. you know, you interview somebody or at, at a job or whatever, you know, everybody come in there to sell themselves. But if right. you're a good judge of character, you can tell when somebody lying or something just ain't right. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing in the dating world. They trying to get a job. So you got to literally try to interview them, not interview in that sense, just like that. But you got to pay attention to it's them analogy. to see. Yeah. Yeah. To see if they are worthy of that. You got to listen to what they value. Listen to how they think. Pay attention to how they behave. That's why. That's why social media is so is is also can be a positive thing, to where you can look at these here things. I, me personally, right? I look at how a woman dresses. I go to her social media because that's gonna tell me she don't think nothing wrong with it. Do she got her titties and areolas out, or is she dressed modestly and sexy, <laughs> but but still modest and covered up? Is she talking about sucking dick every two memes? You know what I'm saying? She talk about how wet, <laughs> how wet her wap is all the time. She got the because, yeah. yeah, like those things, those things is attention seeking sexual things that women do. And they know what it's going to do to the men that follow them. It's going to cause a reaction. So do I want to be bothered with that? Do I want to be bothered with the boss chick that don't need a man? These here are things that I pay attention to. And you should be paying attention to if a man wants to be a provider for a family. If he if he if he has dick discipline and different things like that, go ahead. Yeah, I was, I was about to say the same way men should be paying attention to things in women. You know what I'm saying? Like of why you don't just wipe a chick up after two weeks? Like yeah, you. I mean, especially <laughs> you know that that honeymoon phase of dating where you just meet somebody, y'all texting all day, and you're doing all that type. Like that's where you 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 can't make major decisions during that time period. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to let things play out to where you get to see how they are in their actual day to day life. That's how you can see how how their communication skills are, how they resolve mm-hmm. issues. Uh, what what is their money management like? Like, how do they prioritize their life? How responsible are they? You know what I'm saying? Like, and and mm-hmm. just based on what I see on a lot of social media, a lot of women view the wrong things negatively. Like, for example. Uh, they they would cut a dude off and block him and delete him and all that because he canceled a date. You know what I'm saying? Like where it could be something where like for he he told you, oh man, I told my homeboy I was supposed to help him move Saturday. I forgot about it, so we're gonna have to reschedule our date. A lot of women would eliminate a dude over something like that, where that's really a sign that's showing you that he's a reliable person. His word means something. He's not going to go just have some fun and kick it with a chick when he has his homeboy dependent on. Him. Those are things that are that are signs that that's the husband type of material type of guy that women ultimately want, but they would they would cut him off because of the short term ramifications yeah. of his but choice. You, but see, but see, but here's the thing with that, right? What you just stated, everything that's that's a logical way of thinking of it, right? How many women are mm-hmm. actually logical when they when they think about these things? Uh-huh. Many of them are. They're thinking with their emotion. They're thinking, oh, he just curved me, all right, you know. He did that. Oh, I'm just gonna cur- I'm just gonna curb him and ghost him because he did that, right? Because they're not thinking logically. That's a good point. They most they they not gonna do that. The only time they might think logically or give you a chance is if you if you if you pushed her navel out, a navel out while you was hitting it. You was all the way in there. <laughs> then she'd be like, yeah. then she'd be like, you know what? He told his friend he was gonna go help, so it's all good. It's okay. I'll relax. He told his friend he was gonna go help before me. I, I'm not gonna trip about this. Like, listen, dick will make them. Dick will make them a little more logical. 
it'll make them give um, you another little chance or something like that. Like, come on now. But if you ain't hit her yet, it's a wrap. A lot of times, it's a wrap. She gonna get in her feelings and she gonna be like, nah. She ain't gonna think logically about it. But put that meat on her. It'd be all right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, hopefully we can uh, start to see some type of shift in the in the dating decisions that we that people are making out here. Because uh, obviously, making the short term emotional decisions is not the way to go. Um, this whole, you know, I, I guess thinking about uh, one way of looking at emotion would be the short term choices, like choices that you make off impulse based off how you, what you're thinking or feeling at that moment. Um, but in a lot of cases, though, that's the wrong thing to do. You know what I'm saying? Like sitting back, taking a, taking a step back and evaluating the situation as a whole. That's how businesses operate. That's how governments operate. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the, the smart more way to surefire do way of, of operating. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's the approach that, that guys that have success with dating use like, like mm-hmm. SD, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you talk about how you vet women and how, how long it's yep. going to, you know what I'm saying? Like, this this whole process of looking for somebody you're compatible with if you just wanted a chick that was willing to marry you i mean how hard would that be yeah you no problem <laughs> man look let me toss a rock in a crowd of <laughs> shit. like they you know that's not hard to do but i want to like you said you look at everything so i i tend to i try to look at everything okay uh what's the probability of her leaving if she is a boss chick that don't need a man. It's high. It's high. Statistically, it's high. If she making this here type of money and she a boss True. chick, don't need no man, it's statistically high. Nope. Bye. If she's got a really high body count, which you can't tell, you just got to pay attention to and see how she moves and different things out there and give off whole signs and stuff like that. It's extremely high for those women. Nope. Try to try my best to eliminate them because the great Tupac said, you can't turn a hoe <laughs> to a housewife. To a housewife. To a housewife. That don't apply for men. I know. You say whatever you want, but so you know, that's just what I do, man. You gotta you gotta right, bet them better. So I try. All yeah. right, y'all, man. Looks like we are up against the clock, so we about to get up out of here. Um, but before we go, man, I want to give another shout out to my man, Brother Soul Productions, for keeping us like with our background audio. Uh, I want to remind y'all to continue supporting the podcast or our cash up on our PayPal. Uh, JSD, man, I appreciate y'all linking up so we can get another episode knocked out. This has been another episode of the Hold a Husband Podcast. Y'all, thanks for tuning in. Peace. <laughs>